We will go through 6 important things that is most likely stopping you at getting better, or it is slowing you down. This all is applied to every rank, from the lowest to even champions, so I'm sure that you will like the video. Subtitles are available. Let me start off with a question. For example, if the attacker is by the waiting room and you are in the cafe's hallway, what angle do you hold on the attacker if you want to be the peeker? Passive or aggressive? This is something that, I will honestly say, 99% of the people don't understand. Holding passive angles means that you will be the one that will peek the enemy, whereas holding a pixel angle or holding an aggressive angle onto the waiting room means that you are about to be peeked from the attacker regardless if he knows where you are or not. Let me elaborate. Passive angles are held in a way that you are waiting for the sound cue and then you pick the enemy before the enemy can pick you. Whereas, pixel angles are held mostly for the information and then to, just sometimes, swing the attacker with the pre-firing him. A huge and big difference over here is, the attacker could have pre-fired your pixel pick, which will happen a lot in the higher MMR. Whereas, if you will be holding the passive angle onto the waiting attacker, such as like this, you cannot be pre-fired. You are literally waiting for the attacker to get in the hallway. They will have no cover and then you will just swing him and pre-fire him. The question on the very start is simply too general. It really depends on how did you end up in that situation. Letting attackers to get in the bank is probably not optional in some situations. Whereas letting him to do that in the last 1 or 2 seconds of the round is fine, as he will have no time to plant. Knowing this will let you to deal with aggressive teams way easier. How do you deny the edge Zofia rushing straight in the ranked? You hold passive angles, because that way you'll be the one that picks them, but the edge guy will be in a severe disadvantage. Let's take a look on a one of the pro league clips. Attackers are rushing through the laundry stairs. So the passive angle will be to hold like this. And this guy can't pick you. This, this guy has to continuously walk and watch you. And at any time this guy can pick him. So you have one player over here and then you can have one player over here. And the moment they are here, like on the yellow dot, pick this and pick this. There is no way that this guy can kill both of you. And that is how you deal with the aggressive playstyles. You actually play passive. Along, alongside, alongside with the trap operators. So important notice to take away here is, aside to the how to pick guide that you can find on the top right corner, passive angles are there for the more aggressive plays, whereas holding aggressive angles are there to get the info at the cost of possibly dying. I have covered 10 reasons why you might be dying behind the cover if holding aggressive angles such as pixel angles, so make sure to check that out as well. I was inspired by the content creator for this one when I saw them putting this example. How do you deal with a player on the top of the solarium, close to the bathroom and you're by the stairs, and you have drawn him out? Do you just try to pre-fire him, or? Let me tell you that it will be a huge tunnel vision, and you shouldn't be doing that unless you know that bedroom is clear. Tunnel visioning can be as obvious as they for some situations, but also they can be pretty subtle. Let's say that you have joined out a guy in the toilet on the consulate, and you want to kill him. You're about to flash him out now, and to push him. Is that a good idea? It is not. There are vertical holes on the cafeteria that in the higher ranks, someone with a shotgun or SMG-11 will happily wait for the people like you. This was just an example of less obvious tunnel vision, but I think you understand the point. As much as someone looks like a free kill, that doesn't necessarily mean it is a free kill. Let's again go as a defender, but the question is now, what is your mindset when you're bandit or Kai tricking a wall? For example, the CC walls on the clubhouse. Is it mentality to have the walls closed for the entirety of the round or something else? The true mentality behind most of what you do as a defender should be how to waste as much utility as possible, but as well as how to deny the map control as much as possible, which will later on turn into the time wasting. You don't penetrate trick CC walls to have them closed for the majority of the round. It is simply impossible against the proper attack teams. You penetrate your kite trick to waste the utility from the attackers, whether it to be two concussion mines on the Zofia, impacts on the Zofia, flashes, EMPs, etc. Having the walls closed for the entirety of the round is just a bonus. Here are some comments that triggered me to make this step. But during that, 
in the same example, do you know what usually happens in the Pro League? When attackers open up the CC vault, some teams like to rotate for the construction push and they try to open up the cash vaults. You can bandit check these as well. And now, if you have managed to waste plenty of utility on the first walls, they most likely won't be able to contest your bandit anymore, unless they play vertically, which will still force the takers to have that map control, to use their time and manpower to deal with the bandit. For both walls, the mindset was exactly this, to waste their resources, utility, as well as people. I have mentioned how attackers are usually rotating, so let's take a deeper look into that. You need to understand where you should be and at what time. Some objectives, such as clubhouse basement, is pretty straightforward. You clear out the top floor and you do the church push, usually with Zofia by the Adam stairs. But on the other hand, most of the objectives require rotation. We will go for two examples. Villa and when you are doing the aviator push from the bedroom side. To get the control all the way to the trophy, you need to have someone by the extra window. When you get that, the Astro guy should rotate toward the 90 to contest the 90 people, so your team can get the control of the red stairs, and then you can proceed. After you get the 90 control, you rotate two people toward the study balconies to open up the aviator walls. It is important not to do this too quick. There is really no point of having zone by the 90 if you don't have trophy in control. There is also no point of having people by the study balcony if you cannot open up the aviator walls. Having players on not required position is playing already a 4 vs 5 or a 3 vs 5. For example, Team Park when dealing against the day current bank. When you get the control of the office and initiation, you need to rotate a player to break window. Having a player there too early is basically wasting an operator there. I have seen this issue a lot even in the highest tier of the game. Why do you push defenders vertically? Is it to open up, let's say, Garage's wall on the consulate? That is great, but for what are the rest 10 holes? We are again entering in the wrong mindset. You should open up the vertical holes in order to have a safe land by any of the default places in the garage. Getting kills is just a bonus, just how getting kills as a roamer is also a bonus, or when your entry is getting frags is a bonus. The mentality is not to get the kills when you are playing vertically. It is to clear out strong positions from the defenders that you won't be able to push them horizontally. Such as, you cannot push anyone behind the white man from the bridge, as they will be holding passive angles onto you and just pre-fire you when you are in the middle of nowhere. You cannot, for it is very hard to clear these spots horizontally, so you open up them vertically, just for the sake to make these areas unplayable for the defenders, and on all three spots, Defenders can pretty easily deny the plant with the C4 for example. You can and should apply this for every single time when you are opening up the vertical holes. You want to deny the map control from the defenders. Many people don't know how to properly attack, and a lot of the times they don't know what to do in a specific situation. But did you know that understanding how to defend is mandatory to learn how to attack? Let's go to a round that I was reviewing on my stream. They have castle barricade off the office on the top main stairs hall. Having, having office control as an attacker is very similar as having bar control as an attacker in the SSG hall. So office connects cash with the objective. Bar connects top floor roamers with the objective. That's the same idea. If you, if attackers, it is important to see the blunders from the enemies. If you see a such misplay from them, abuse it. Get in the office, open up the case of barricade and the jacuzzi wall. And you pretty much already have the wound around because nobody can go back to the objective, but as well as you pretty much have everything in control. Let's go for another, but this time a pro league clip to show off that even some default utility investment can give you an idea how to approach to a situation differently. See teams reinforcing these two, but also they can even open that up. So the, the idea of beh behind reinforcing at least one wall is to uh, disallowed the angle from the outside service towards the service, like this spot. Like this is a kind of a default spot to be as, an, as a defender. But I think what you're doing is you're letting defender uh, attackers to plant over here. Because imagine if this was so, that anyone like in the lobby could deny the plant. Even if Hibana is kind of covering this angle, like rotations, uh, you still can deny the plan from this side. So the more reinforcements you're going to use on the service wall, 
uh, the more spots for attackers can be like can be used for the plant. So if you are trying to understand how to attack but you don't know how to defend, then trust me, you won't know how to attack. Thank you for watching this video and staying with me for this long. And thanks all the patrons and YouTube members for making this video available. If you want to learn all the basics and advanced things about the siege, make sure to give me a like, subscribe and click the notification bell to get all notifications from my channel. Make sure to give me feedback down in the comment section below.